Hi everybody, this presentation covers the topic of stoichiometry. So you might be asking yourself, well what the heck is stoichiometry anyway? And there are a number of uh, different levels at which we can understand chemical reactions. Uh, so let's consider first um, you know, what's going on at the particle level. So stoichiometry is the calculation of measurable relationships between reactants and products in chemical reactions. Uh, let's consider the reaction of iron oxidizing. That means it's reacting with oxygen to form iron oxide compound. Uh, now, based on the information that we know about uh, these different elements, we know that uh, in this particular reaction we will produce um, iron oxide from iron and oxygen in a 4-3-2 ratio. I'm getting these numbers, 4-3-2, from the coefficients used to balance the chemical reaction. Now, what this means is that at the particle level, um, I just always need to conserve these ratios of 4, 3, 2. So if I have 12 iron atoms, that means that I have three times more than what's present in the balanced equation. If I have nine molecules of oxygen, I have three times more than what's required to balance the equation. So again, uh, three times four, three times three is giving me 12 and nine. So how many formula units of iron oxide would be formed? Well, I would do three times two, uh, and that would be telling me the amount of iron oxide that would be formed. It would be six. So just as we can understand chemical reactions at the particle level, we also want to understand them at a level which is going to be observable in the classroom. So that's where we're going to be using the mole concept. Uh, so four atoms of iron is not something that we could observe in the classroom. Neither is uh, three molecules of oxygen or two formula units of iron oxide. However, four moles of iron, uh, this would be a measurable amount of iron. Uh, three moles of oxygen would be a measurable amount of oxygen. Um, and again, we need to conserve the ratios. So we can think of the stoichiometry uh, values in this particular reaction, four moles of iron reacting with three moles of oxygen to produce two moles of iron oxide. Um, and we can change these numbers. So if we have 16 moles of iron, which is four times the amount that the equation tells us, uh, that would mean that we need 12 moles of diatomic oxygen to react with that, and that, would, uh, that reaction would produce eight moles of iron three oxide. Stoichiometry calculations will also allow us to incorporate the masses of chemical reactants and products. Uh, so in order to do these, uh, we would want to know molar masses for all of the reactants and the product as well. Uh, for iron, uh, the molar mass would be 55.85 grams per mole. That is coming straight off of the periodic table uh, from the average atomic mass. For oxygen, because the value for oxygen is 16, we need to double that to calculate the molar mass of 32.00 uh, grams per mole for oxygen. For the iron 3 oxide, uh, we would determine the mass from the iron, which would be 55.85 multiplied by 2, and the 16 from oxygen multiplied by 3. Uh, by adding the two together, we would determine the total molar mass of the compound. Uh, now, we could also do um, an analysis, and if we know that we have four moles of iron, uh, by multiplying 4 by 55.85, that would give us this value of 223.4 grams of iron. Uh, three moles of oxygen would have a mass of 96.00 grams, um, and the reaction between uh, those two reactants, iron and oxygen, would uh, allow us to produce 319.40 grams of Fe2O3. It's also possible to do stoichiometry calculations using volume if we're dealing with either reactants or products which exist as gases. Uh, the example reaction that I've provided here is the reaction of diatomic hydrogen with diatomic iodine to form the compound hydrogen iodide. Now, at standard temperature and pressure, one mole of a gas occupies 22.4 liters. So if I have one mole of hydrogen uh, reacting with one mole of iodine, that would allow for me to produce two moles of hydrogen iodide, which would have a volume of 44.8 liters of this compound. Now, I put this in as, a, as an important example. The volumes in stoichiometry uh, volume calculations are not always going to be additive. Uh, please note here that one uh, mole of nitrogen would have a volume of 22.4 liters 
three moles of hydrogen would be 22.4 multiplied by three. That would be a volume of 67.2 liters. Now, because we're only in this reaction producing two moles of ammonia gas, uh, the total volume produced by this reaction would only be 44.8. So it's not always the case that we can take the individual volume of both reactants and just add them to find the volume of product which will be produced. We really need to calculate based on how many moles of product are going to be made. In this case, because two moles of ammonia would be produced, the volume of gas here would be 44.8 liters. When we consider reactions taking place in the real world, it is very, very rare that we will have the exact ratio of the two different reactants. Um, it's more likely going to be the case that we will have uh, one reactant which we have a limited amount of, and the other reactant is present in a greater amount than what we actually need. Imagine when you're burning a candle in your home. If uh, we had perfectly balanced ratios of the paraffin wax that is going to be burned and oxygen, um, as the candle burns, uh, you would actually use up all the oxygen in your home and everybody would die. Um, what's going on really is that you uh, have a limited amount of paraffin that you're burning and you have an almost unlimited amount of oxygen. So burning the candle is not going to put you at risk uh, to run out of oxygen. Uh, now, when we consider limiting and excess reactants, I want you all to know that reactants may also be referred to as reagents here. A limiting reagent, uh, this is the reactant which is going to determine how much of the product will be formed. An excess reactant, this is the one that we have more than enough of. And um, for this one, we're not going to use it all up. There's going to be leftovers. Um, I'd like to use an example of making sandwiches to explain limiting and excess reactants. Uh, so let's say to make a sandwich, we need two slices of bread and one slice of lunch meat. Now I'd like you to consider two different scenarios. In the first scenario, I go to my refrigerator. I find that I have 16 slices of bread and I have four slices of lunch meat. Now, in this scenario, I can only make four sandwiches, and I'm being limited by how much lunch meat. Remember, I only had four slices of lunch meat. Uh, it doesn't matter that I had 16 slices of bread. I don't have enough lunch meat to make any more sandwiches than four. Now, in a second scenario, let's imagine that we go to your refrigerator and find that you have 10 slices of bread and you have six slices of lunch meat. In this scenario, because you only have 10 slices of bread, you're only going to be able to make five sandwiches. Uh, the bread in this case would be the limiting reactant. The lunch meat would be the excess reactant. The final topic for this presentation is percent yield. Uh, percent yield is a way of tracking the amount uh, or the percentage of a product which is actually collected compared to the theoretical yield or how much we should have been able to produce in a uh, chemical change process. Uh, so the actual yield, uh, this is the amount of product that would be collected when we are performing an experiment. Um, sometimes this will be referred to as experimental yield. Some people will call this actual yield. A theoretical yield is the amount of product that we would predict we should be able to make based on stoichiometric calculations. So to calculate a percent yield, we would divide the actual or the experimental yield by the theoretical yield, and then we would multiply by 100 to calculate a percent yield. Um, now, we can compare this. It's very analogous to calculating the percent correct on a quiz or a test. So if I take a quiz and it's worth 20 points, and I score 18 out of 20, uh, my actual score was 18. Uh, the theoretical score, what I should have been able to earn, was 20. So to find my percent yield is like my percent correct, I would take 18, uh, my actual, divide by the theoretical 20, what I should have been able to achieve, and then multiply by 100 to find 90%. In the coming days, uh, actually the next few weeks in class, I will be posting a series of how-to videos to my YouTube channel where students will be able to visit uh, the channel and watch a number of videos which explain how to perform different types of mole and stoichiometry calculations. I'll be announcing information about those videos in class in the near future.